Hi, and welcome everyone. I'm Bruce Schwartz. Thanks so much for the interest, the subscribing, the comments, and contributions. This channel has been so supported by this community and it's growing all the time. And what are we doing? We're looking at the moon today. We're looking for hands on the moon. No, I'm kidding. We're looking at the surface for anomalies. Not always easy. Not always easy to get along. Not always easy to agree. But that's okay. That's what makes us brothers and sisters. We fight sometimes. We can disagree. But you know, usually when a brother or brother and sister get in a fight, they usually come back to the supper table, right? And that's what we should all be doing. So we're looking at color on the surface again. I always like seeing it in natural live footage, of course, because, you know, it just proves that there is color on the surface. We don't see it. We've never seen it in any NASA footage. We've why not? You know, because it's so beautiful and it really gives us an idea of what could really be down there. When you see a green surface or terrain, it makes you wonder if the possibility of an atmosphere could be real, if there could be vegetation, you know, and I never jump the gun, guys. Like I said, maybe the moon has no vegetation whatsoever. But the activity that we are seeing on the surface of the moon is irrefutably, without a doubt, proving that there is life or activity up there. It could be a breakaway civilization. It could be humans. It could be aliens. We don't know, right? All we can do is film them and get as much footage as we can to try to analyze together what we are finding. The last UFOs that I found really look like biological creatures. They're expanding, they're contracting, and there's this massive one that lets go of this gas or color that is actually lit up that we saw in the last UFOs video, uh, UFO videos. So it is very intriguing. We're getting in so close, and it's not, again, I say it so often, it's not just about getting in. Well, yes, because we, I wanna get in, right? But we can get in in the way that we're keeping the contrast and the quality so that we can see more on the surface, see more what's up there. Archimedes Crater, Montes Apenninus to the right, the Apennine Mountains, Eratosthenes Crater at the end there. Each of these areas consists of many anomalies. Copernicus to the bottom there, corner just a bit into the frame. Again, more structuring on the surface that we saw there. Uh, Endymion crater on the top here is a crater uh, not very well known, not very uh, seen in many footages. Uh, John Lear had mentioned that to me that, you know, I think he mentioned that to anyone basically that if anyone gets a good shot of uh, in, in Endymion should, you know, post it because there's not a lot about the, that crater. And I tell you what, it is an astonishing crater the white one at the top that we just saw, because there's light surrounded, there's pathways that look symmetrical in every area. Look how the cr supposed craters are here. Can you imagine what would happen to the moon if it is hollow, what everyone says, the moon is hollow. How the heck is this gonna survive all these asteroids, serious, serious guys or meteors? How is it gonna survive that? The size of some of these areas, uh, the craters, are astonishing. And I tell you what, they tell us all the time that a bus-sized asteroid hitting the Earth would be could be devastating. Well, why was it not devastating for the moon? Look at all the craters. The moon should be absolutely destroyed, right? Because the size of the craters that we're looking at, we're told that they would destroy Earth if they landed here. Can you imagine Archimedes uh, Crater? Can you imagine a meteorite of 84 kilometers coming at, I don't know what speeds, high elevated meteorites, meteor speeds, sorry, and crashing into the Earth? Can you imagine what that would do to Earth? Well, why didn't it affect the moon? The clouds on the surface or smoke 
This is what everyone is seeing the gray. The light particles are playing inside of these clouds and are keeping us uh, from seeing the surface of the moon properly. But when we do zoom in, we find many areas of greenery. It's not made up. I've proved it before. I can't wait till the moon comes back. I can't wait to go to the north side of the moon on vacation and take many, many hours of footage. I can't wait. I can't wait to get into the structures, get into the surface to look for UFOs. I want to get to Aristarchus Crater. I just can't wait to look at Aristarchus Crater again. The moon is always changing. Here's Mare Serenitatis. Uh, Bessel crater on that line there. So here again, remember 649 kilometers, uh, 419 miles, I think it was, uh, Mare Serenitatis. And how could Ejecta run that long? Absolutely impossible. The Apennine Mountains, Cassini crater with the white dot in the center coming up to Archimedes crater on top. Here's a nice angle to be able to see the Apennine Mountains. Now look at the mountains. Not mount, the, the, where are they? Right? It's a layer, one side, it's more like a ridge that's going all along the Apennine Mountains up to Eratosthenes Crater on the top left there, where it ends. Plato Crater on the bottom right, we can see coming out of the frame. Crazy Penguin got me some solar film once again. He was the first to uh, send me up some solar film. Crazy Penguin's a, an amazing friend and a community member, and he's waiting for me to do some sun uh, footage for sure. There's so much around that bloody sun. Uh, Crazy Penguin himself gets uh, a lot now around the sun, and he loves taking photos. My bro, thanks a lot, Crazy Penguin, for sending up that solar fi uh, filter. Guys, the paper is an amazing paper. It's going to leave the sun a natural color, it says, so we'll be able to see its natural color and maybe for once see the spots, maybe, because I've actually never seen the spots with the filter that I have right now. But yeah, we'll be getting up, back up to see the sun. All the activity that happened in 2016, those who have just arrived to the channel, Thanks so much for subscribing. Go back to my videos and look and see everything I caught in 2016. There was so much going on. We had CMEs on, on the sun, uh, ma uh, coronal mass ejections. One of the biggest ones ever seen in the world that came out of the sun in 2017. So uh, I, was, I was saying 2016, wasn't I? Sorry. 2017, everything that I found on the surface of the moon and in the sky was amazing. Hoping that this summer is going to be just as amazing and that I'm gonna get uh, just as much. So guys, this is footage from a CGXL 1400 HD telescope. It's a telescope that's worth $10,000 uh, without any options on it. Of course, the optical tube um, with the camera, the SLR camera at the back is over a meter long. And now we're zooming up on the top side of the moon or what was exposed on April 24th. I took so many different angles in the footage and there's still so much more I can do with this footage, guys. It's being creative. The moon will come back soon. Thanks for the support. I love you all, guys, and be safe.